The 11th and 12th of January will go down in history as days when a powerful case was made at the International Court of Justice against Israel. South Africa presented some very strong charges against Israel of committing genocidal acts. Israel's response was well to say that it was acting in self-defense and everything was Hamas's fault. What happened during these two days? What were the charges leveled by South Africa? And what lies ahead in this process? We go to Abdul to find out. Abdul, two very important days. I think that will go down in history. Even many years from now, I think the arguments that were made, the proceedings are will remain very significant. So could you first maybe take us through day one, very important South Africa's case, which was made very strongly, widely, uh, you know, at least widely covered on social media. We'll come to the mainstream media later. But what was South Africa's case and what were the kind of arguments they were presenting? Well, uh, Prashant, South Africa's case was is primarily based on uh, the uh, claim that Israel has been, what it is doing in Gaza is basically a violation of 1948 Geneva Convention on Genocide, which basically uh, both of them are parties uh, of, both of them, both Israel and South Africa have signed it and therefore they are there. And uh, the lawyer, South Africa's lawyers on uh, Thursday basically put five point uh, set of, you can say, with evidences, allegations or you can say uh, charges against uh, Israel, which basically uh, is a is a combination of what is happening, what Israel has been doing in his, in Gaza since since October seven. So they have summarized in five basic heads, which of course starts with that mass killing of Palestinians and civilians, uh, and uh, which basically also includes children. Uh, as we all know, around more than twenty three thousand Palestinians have been killed. And, and that uh, includes around 10,000 uh, children, including babies, newborn babies. So that basically is the first set of charge which South Africa has brought. Uh, the, the extent uh, of the killings and the gravity of that uh, uh, situation on the ground. The second set of uh, charges are related to how uh, Israel has been deliberately causing bodily and mental harm to most of the uh, Palestinians in the uh, in Gaza, uh, through of course uh, bombing uh, their houses, bombing uh, uh, civilian facilities, bombing uh, uh, different kinds of uh, support systems, and completely destroying them so that they do not they are not left with uh, uh, any uh, mechanism which basically can address to their grievances their trauma and so on and so forth so apart from uh, kind of wounding around 60000 plus palestinians uh, uh, it has also caused a kind of mental trauma uh, 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 israeli attack has also called mental trauma and it has completely destroyed all the mechanisms uh, which basically can uh, address uh, these kind of situations. So that is the second set of uh, charges. The third, of course, is related to how Israeli bombings in Gaza has caused mass displacement of Palestinians. Um, as we all know, uh, uh, more than 80% of the Gaza's pre-war population has been displaced. Uh, most of them are living in the uh, uh, temporary shelters. Even those temporary shelters have been bombed by Ga Israelis and therefore there is nowhere in Gaza which is safe. So that basically is part of the third uh, set of allegations which also includes the Israeli blockade on food and other essential commodities which basically an attempt as an attempt to kind of force Palestinians to leave or kind of uh, kind of commit a mass uh, kind of uh, genocide in that uh, in the region. So uh, it basically cites the statements given by uh, various uh, authorities, Israeli authorities, including uh, Prime Minister and Defense Minister, uh, ever since the early days of war, which basically led to the imposition of blockade, how it has basically prevented all international mechanisms including the United Nations Security Council resolution to prevent the aid from flowing into the Gaza and therefore depriving, uh, using starvation uh, as a weapon, depriving Palestinians of basic uh, amenities. So this is the third set of uh, uh, charges. The fourth, of course, is the destruction of the healthcare, which is related to uh, uh, Israeli attacks since the early days on the on hospitals, clinics, uh, health staff, 
international groups uh, which are basically providing medical aid to the palestinians wounded uh, in the israeli bombardment uh, so in attacks on health uh, staff attacks on hospitals which of course by uh, itself is a, a war crime is basically set of charges which related to uh, the fourth main uh, point the th uh, the fifth and the final set of allegation uh, charges are related to uh, how uh, uh, israel has basically pursued a policy of preventing palestinian uh, births uh, so newborn pregnant women have been displaced the hospitals the where there were incubators have been destroyed how the bobby, uh, babies were were killed uh, uh, not only uh, in the hospitals but also in the uh, in the places in the uh, in, in homes palestinian homes were targeted with pregnant women and so on and so forth pregnant then women were moved from one place to another forcibly to basically prevent uh, them from having basic set of healthcare which is required to have a healthy birth so this these are the five set of uh, uh, you can say charges which were brought to prove uh, south africa's uh, claim that israel is committing genocide against palestinians in gaza on thursday right of course abdul uh, israel on friday responding to these charges many reports saying that it was largely a, a arguments full of uh, diversion and obfuscation so what was israel's response to these very significant charges well well uh, israel has uh, one can say uh, of course the judges will decide but uh, what is uh, there what was there uh, on on display on friday was it seems that israel was not bothered about responding to these points uh, uh, specifically but uh, kind of trying to discredit south africa's overall uh, petition on technical grounds in particular that they were not uh, 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 consulted or they were not given chance to respond to these allegations before uh, bringing the case into the icj uh, this is one major uh, uh, defense which the israeli uh, advocates uh, presented in form in front of icj apart from that they have of course they have repeated uh, the claims which they have been ma uh, making since the beginning of uh, the war or beginning of the uh, the point that uh, how israeli bombing creates basically genocide in uh, in gaza they have been claim they claim their lawyers claimed in in front of icj that what israel is doing is primarily in uh, uh, self defense uh, uh, in response to what happened on october 7th by the palestinian resistance group uh, which basically led to the killing of around 1200 people uh, they tried to equate uh, uh, the their crimes against the palestinian uh, uh, palestinian children and newborn babies while showing the pictures of some uh, babies killed during the israeli uh, sorry during the uh, during october 7 attack that was their uh, uh, defense of, of course they have also said that alleged in fact that south africa has a long history of collaboration with hamas and uh, they uh, they are basically trying to uh, basically claim that hamas is primarily a terrorist organization and south africa's links with hamas basically discredits its uh, petition into uh, in the icj they have also said that um, uh, try to justify the killings of palestinian people uh, particularly the uh, 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 claims of uh, attacks on civilians and attacks attacks on hospitals uh, saying that hamas has been as we all know this has been uh, uh, their claim since uh, the first day of war that hamas has been using hospitals and civilian infra uh, civilian uh, residential areas uh, as basically a, a shield to kind of carry out their attacks against uh, israel of course they have also uh, tried to discredit the evidences presented by south africa uh, in in form of uh, statements uh, made by netanyahu uh, galant and other top officials that how they have repeatedly said that they will wipe out palestinians from gaza uh, palestinians in gaza are nothing but uh, human animals and they will be treated like that they 
how they have threatened ask them to leave the territory how they have forced them to evacuate northern gaza and so on and so forth and all those statements were presented as evidence uh, israel israeli lawyers basically say it claimed that all of these statements uh, uh, which basically runs uh, as uh, more than dozens of pages uh, in south africa's petition is basically uh, are random uh, uh, statements made by angry israeli officials who did not uh, uh, mean what they were saying and so and so so of course uh, apart from the fact that there were technical points brought in to discredit uh, uh, completely uh, uh, south africa's petition rest of the uh, defense is as experts have uh, opined uh, seems quite weak uh, and basically does not add uh, does not refute basically uh, south africa's evidence is presented in the icj and therefore it looks uh, uh, as if now of course the judges will decide looks quite weak the israeli uh, 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 refutal to the uh, south africa's case looks quite weak abdul and free also uh, what lies ahead for this case what are the next steps as far as is concerned well uh, uh, it is expected that the final uh, verdict if uh, it comes it may take um, years basically uh, to come but uh, since south africa has uh, also appealed for an immediate intervention based on the uh, the based on the situation and west based on the fact that uh, delay uh, will basically uh, cause further destruction in gaza and more killing of palestinians at that time given the urgency of the matter south africa has also asked for an interim order asking for uh, uh, intervening uh, intervention by the icj uh, to ask so, uh, ask israel to stop its war uh, and uh, take some um, remedial measures like increased human right uh, sorry humanitarian uh, aid inside the gaza, inside gaza it seems uh, that uh, icj may uh, deliver that interim uh, verdict within uh, a week or, s- or two or maybe few weeks uh, from now onwards and uh, Uh, of course uh, the nature of that intervention of course we are in no position to uh, say but given the evidence is presented and given the arguments made it looks like that icj may ask israel to kind of uh, have basically in in the interim period a ceasefire um and more humanitarian uh, aid but whether israel will follow that verdict or not that is an altogether different matter given the fact that though icj verdict is binding uh, 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 the implementation uh, uh, lies uh, in united nations security council only this united nations security council can intervene if some country refuses to abide by the uh, uh, judgment made by the icj and therefore Uh, it ultimately comes down to what united nations security council will do and given the fact that the us uh, has a veto there uh, we are in no position to say whether there will actually be any action against the israeli uh, uh, war in gaza thank you so much abdul not to mention the fact that the composition of the icj itself may you know leads to certain questions on what kind of verdict might come out as well even in the short term also important to remember but thank you so much for that analysis That's all we have in this weekend episode of Daily Debrief. We'll be back on Monday with a fresh episode. In the meanwhile, do visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org. Follow us on all the social media platforms. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button.